Ouch! Be uh, careful, will you? I, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I, I'm not used to this sort of thing. Shouldn't bother you at your age. Got much more to do? No, ma'am. Couldn't you give me some idea of what this is about? Why you came to me to do this work? You're getting paid to do a job. Ask no questions. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Mr. Hello, Rita. What's taking so long? Rembrandt here likes his work. Take a look at it, will you? Feels like he's been playing tic-tac-toe. Very good. Well, it's finished. Very good. Is it dry? Yes. Wipe it off with this. Yes, yes, ma'am. Your shibble ink is waterproof. I've tested it. Look at that. I want to wash my hands. Do that later. Finish your job. And remember, keep your mouth... There. He gets a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars, eh? Well, you've done such a good job, I think you're entitled to a bonus. I, uh, I want to call my wife. Well, so far, so good. Here's your ticket to Lisbon on tomorrow's Clipper. I take the space assigned to Miss Sidney Royce, correct? That's right. And here's your passport issued in her name. What's to keep Miss Royce from going over? I do. Now, Joe and I will try to get over on the next Clipper, but my man in Lisbon has reserved a suite for you at the Hotel Bella Vista. Your trunk should be there now. Fine. By the time you get there... The Nazi and British agents will have been informed that a Miss Sidney Royce stopping at the Bella Vista has some very important plans drawn on her body. And they're for sale to the highest bidder. That is the idea. How about her little expense money? Oh, yes. Your suite at the hotel is paid for. I got to entertain a lady for a couple hours, don't I? All you've got to do is get lost with her till she misses that plane. And here... Is her picture. Boy, I'm sure going to get lost. <laughs> All this and money, too. <laughs> and now, through the worldwide facilities of the Union Broadcasting Company, we take you to Kenneth Harper, our correspondent at Lisbon. Go ahead, Lisbon. New York calling Lisbon. Go ahead, Lisbon. Good evening. This is Kenneth Harper broadcasting from Lisbon. Your new boss. But not for long, I'm afraid. How many reporters have you sent over there to work for him? Well, you'll be the fifth. And he bounced the others back like ping pong balls. I'll admit Ken's a bit difficult. That's why we decided to send you. Perhaps he needs a woman's touch. Does he know you're sending a female this time? Oh, no. He probably wouldn't like it. Look, Mr. Weston, I need this job pretty badly, but I don't want to make this trip just to see how the Statue of Liberty looks from the other side. Oh, come now, Miss Royce. Harper must have a kind streak somewhere. All you've got to do is find it. Well, it'll be like Stanley looking for Livingston, but I'm afraid I'll have to take a crack at it. Well-informed sources here in Lisbon are as completely uninformed as ever. This is Kenneth Harper returning you now to the UBC studios in New York. And that Frankie, my boy, is a lot of pure, unadulterated hooey. At least 10 million Americans stopped playing gin rummy to listen to it. As a matter of fact, you didn't give him very much news, Ken. News. Latest news you can get out of this town I got from last week's New York paper. Oh, the old boy, I haven't seen an American paper in months. What our little orphan Annie is making out. Hello? Hello? Hello, oh, Miss Roy? This is Pan American Airways calling. Our limousine is on its way to pick you up. Can you be ready ten minutes earlier? Thank you, that'll be fine. She'll be waiting downstairs. Sounds like a lovely girl. Well, we'll get along. How are you going to get to the airport? Why call the taxi? Well, I better be going.
get out. What do you want? Oh. Well, oh, you're G-Man, huh? Well, you got nothing on me. I'm innocent. You are? You mean you don't even go out with girls? Your name's Kelsey, isn't it? Yeah. What do you want with me? Your passport expired three months ago. The folks back home must be worried about you. Oh, my passport. Well, uh, excuse me, nothing personal. Oh, you should wear a girdle. Bad boy. You got a license for this gun? Why, uh, no, no, not yet. But I can explain. You see, uh, I'm a chauffeur for a rich lady. You know how it is? No. How is it? Say, that's a lot of money for a chauffeur to be carrying around. Any law against that? No, not yet, but uh, Congress is working on it. Wait, I'm expecting someone else. Now, come on, get in. Driver, I won't wait any longer. Take me to the nearest drugstore. Oh, Miss Royce, we've got Pan American on the phone for you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, this is Miss Sidney Royce. Miss Royce, we didn't arrange to pick you up at all. You telephoned this morning and said you wouldn't need our car. Oh, there must be some mistake. I didn't telephone. Well, never mind. I'll take a taxi. Hello, Mr. Baker. I've been trying to get you for over an hour. Hey, what happened? Why aren't you on that clipper? Well, that's too bad for Scalzi, but it's nothing for us to worry about. But won't those agents contact the real Sidney Royce? What if they do? She doesn't know anything. That won't make any difference to us. I have a feeling it's going to make plenty of difference to her. finished with the customs, the hotel car will be waiting. Well, I haven't made any hotel reservations. Someone must have made them for you, miss. I will get your baggage. Name, please? Sidney Royce. You can wait here with the bag and save yourself a walk. I'll be right back. Good day, miss. Uh, Miss Sidney Royce? Yes? Uh, we are deeply honored. Your suite is all ready for you. And if there is anything Now, wait I... a moment. What are your rates? Our rates? What difference does it make? Your bill is paid. It is? You sure about that? I'm uh, Sidney Royce of the Union Broadcasting Of company. course, Miss. Your bill is taken care of for as long as you stay. Uh, the gentleman arranged for everything personally. The gentleman? Oh, yes. Uh, the gentleman. I didn't think he treated his assistant so well. Uh, boy! arrived this morning. My what? Your trunks. They're in the bedroom. I beg your pardon. Is there anything else I can do for the lady? You haven't got a Prince Charming up your sleeve, have you, Fairy Godmother? Huh? No. No. Thank you. No, 
Well, this Sidney Royce must be the boss's son. No reporter could afford to live in this Shangri-La. If I were Royce, I wouldn't send my laundry out. You'd probably ship him back as fast as the others. Faster. I want a man to learn the newspaper game the hard way. I want these college kids right off the assembly line. Come on up. No, thanks. I'll meet him tomorrow and uh, see him off. So long. Sidney Royce, is this his suite? Yes, this is Sidney Royce's suite. Mm. Tell him Kenneth Harper's here. Oh, uh, won't you come in, Mr. Harper? Thanks. I missed him at the airport and they told me he was staying here. Of course, I hope I didn't bust in on anything. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, I was just going to telephone you. You see, I'm Sidney Royce. That's all right. If he's busy, I can wait. You're Sidney Royce. But you're a woman. Definitely. Mr. Weston said you'd be surprised. Yes. It's a lovely place, but isn't it rather expensive? I don't know, is it? You should know. You're paying for it. Who, me? Aren't you? Well, I don't understand. This apartment and all those clothes, I thought surely it must be you. Look, I don't know what you've heard about me, but... I don't go in for this, uh, this sort of thing. Then it must be Mr. Weston. But besides taking care of my hotel bill, he sent me two trunks full of gowns and furs. Look. See? Weston, huh? Well, you never know. But why should he do all this for me? I wouldn't know. You see, my mother and father made me leave the room when they discussed those things. Now, just a moment. Look, I don't understand this. I sent for a reporter, a leg man. But I am your leg man. <clears throat> I've had a lot of newspaper experience, Mr. Harper. And besides, Mr. Weston said this job could use a woman's touch. Mr. Weston, huh? Well, maybe it's worth trying. I see you didn't let any grass go under your feet. The boys certainly eyed me up as I came in. What boys? Now, now, please. I know Ronnie Dean. I know him very well. And Baron von Kemp is a big shot Nazi. Now, I know this is a bit out of your line, but uh, if you were to sort of get chummy with the kids, they might let fall some nice juicy bits of news, see? Well, I'll run along and let you get down to work. Wait a minute. But how do I get to meet those two gentlemen? Just open your door and get out of the way. Sidney Royce, I believe. Yes. I am Baron von Kemp of the German staff. You have some business with me, have you not? Yes, I, uh, I guess so. Won't you come in, Baron? Will you sit down? I really didn't expect to start work so soon. Don't let anyone in. I'm Ronald Dean of the British Embassy. May I come in? Well, it's nice of you to call, Mr. Dean, but I, uh, I, I'm busy at the moment. Oh, well, I'll wait. But I hope it won't be for nothing. You will give me a chance to talk to you. Why, of course. <laughs> How did that Britisher learn you were coming here? Same way you did, I suppose. Well, shall we get down to business? Good. Take your robe off, please. What? Your robe. Take it off. Come, come. Stand over here in the light. Why, I'll do no such thing. 
Please, this is no time for false modesty, Miss Royce. Take it off. Now, see here, Baron or no Baron, you can't talk to me like that. I hope you are not going to be difficult, Miss Royce. Oh, I presume you wish to discuss terms first. Well... Get out! Go on, get out! Will you get out or shall I call the manager and have you put out? You are playing a dangerous game, young lady. Hmm. Goodbye, Baron. You should think carefully before you deal with that Britisher. Get out, go on. Well, I warn you. Who does he think he is trying to get personal with me? Oh, so that's what happened. Stupid of him, I'd say, under the circumstances. But did you ever hear of such unmitigated gall in your life? I only let him in because it's my job. Precisely, but don't let him scare you. And if you need any protection... Oh, I don't need any protection from that, old. Well, let's get started, shall we? <laughs> yes, all right. I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd um, drop your robe. What? Well, after all, old girl, you don't want me to buy a cat egg. Why, you, you... No, but really, I mean... Get out, I say! I'm sure if we sat down and talked it over calmly, we could imagine... There's nothing to talk over. I know you think you can get a better offer from the Japanese. I want to talk to you. Yeah? I suppose you've got the lowdown on the entire foreign situation. How did those two, the, the Baron and Dean, ever become diplomats? Never mind that. You get any news? I certainly did. You did what? That Mother was right. All men are snakes. I was insulted. Oh, that's not news. The Baron asked me to take off my robe. Can you imagine? Yes, I can imagine. And right on top of that, that Englishman tried to buy me. Tried to buy you? The sap. Hasn't he heard of our land lease bill? Mr. Harper, I don't like your attitude. Oh, you don't? Well, please don't tell my scoutmaster on account of you might not let me go on the hike tomorrow. Look, what I want out of you is news, not true confessions. Say, are you responsible for all this? Oh, this is where I came in. Now, look, Juliet, it's very simple. All you have to do is telephone those two Romeos and clear your balcony for action, that's all. Not on your life. I wouldn't go near those two again without a convoy. Now, wait a minute. You can't walk out of me like that without notice. Thought you came here to be a newspaper woman. That's what I thought. Well, no newspaper woman worthy of the name would let a little thing like a couple of passes stand in the way of a scoop. Why, do you know I once courted a bearded woman to get the inside of a murder story? And I got it? I don't care if you courted Gargantua and got fleas. But all I want you to do is to get those two glamour boys alone for a while. Think what it'll mean. I am thinking. But it's the chance of a lifetime. You'll make a name for yourself. Like do Barry? Look, listen, Sidney. You know, when I first set eyes on you myself, I said, Ken, I said, there is a smart, level-headed gal that knows her business. Now, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you can finagle an important news story out of them, I'll see that you get all the credit. I'll give you a byline. I'll even put you on the air. You'll be a foreign correspondent, writing columns, or making lecture tours, traveling like, like Eleanor Roosevelt. Well? I, uh, I, I can't quite place it. You can't quite place what? That spiel of yours, it sounds vaguely familiar. Oh, cut the sarcasm. I've got it. It's from the show, the front page. Why, even remember the last line, the so-and-so stole my watch. Well, no so-and-so's going to steal my watch or anything else. I quit. Get out. Now, what you need here is a revolving door. Who is it? The maid. I came in to turn down the bed.
not understand it. She must have used invisible ink. Unless... It's you. What do you want now? Well, I, uh, I want to apologize. No, no, please, please, don't hang up. I've been up all night thinking it over, and I realize that you're perfectly right. I had no business making such impossible demands on you. Will you forgive me? Yes. Yes. Do I want my job back? Of course I want it back. No, no. You won't have to see those nasty men again. Ask her to have dinner with you. Well, oh, I'd be very happy to. Uh, what shall I wear? Anything with a low back. <laughs> you mean it's formal. Oh, that'll be fine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. Mars, are you sure that that girl's a spy? Well, frankly, we know nothing about her here at the United States Embassy. It was the British intelligence that first got word of the plans. Judging by Baron von Kemp's actions, our report was correct. She doesn't look like the type to me who'd grin for spying. And certainly not for murder. <laughs> There's no such thing as type for murder. You could be the murderer. Or you. Yes. No, not, not, not me. Oh. Seemed like a scared kid. Well, she's probably inexperienced and frightened. All right, then what do you want me to do? Well, being a woman, Miss Royce might be susceptible to a little, um, romance. Yes, and you're a handsome dog, you know, huh? Nothing doing. No love making to a murderess for me. Or I kiss a girl that close my eyes. I always like to be able to open them up again. There's no reason to get as far as the mushy stage, old boy. All we want you to do is get the plans off her back. And how do I get to a back? Playing leapfrog? Mr. Harper, I don't think you realize the seriousness of the situation. Men in the government service have laid down their lives on less worthy assignments. Why, do? Have you stopped to think that it would be quite a feather in your cap if you were to recover the plan? Say, that would be a whale of a story, wouldn't it? A story? Why, it'd be an exclusive story, a scoop. Farewell, gentlemen. I go now to woo the fair Borgia. Good, but be careful, Harper. Never fear, Captain. I shall withhold my fire until I see the white of her back. Hello. Hello. I have to leave my key at the desk. I'll carry it for you. Well, where are you taking me? To the best place in town. I've got to square myself, you know. Well, this is it. Please wait, please. My, my, how will I ever be able to go back to drugstore dinners after this, Mr. Harper? Mr. Harper? If you're going to be that formal, you might just as well use my full name, Kenneth C. Harper. What does the C stand for? Clarence. Clarence? <clears throat> well, perhaps you'd better go back to Mr. Harper. Just uh, admiring your gown. Beautiful. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> go on, go on. Well, dinner with the boss exactly two days after we've met. I didn't think things like this happened to ordinary people. You're not ordinary. We're not just people. We're newspaper men. Must be able to tell the real thing when we see it. You've got to think fast and act fast before somebody else cuts in on you. You're a scoop if I ever saw one. Now, Clarence. You know, you, 
you'll really love me. Or am I being too forward? What is it about this place that makes men so, uh, so impetuous? Well, maybe it's you. No, it's never happened to me anywhere else. But here, the minute I'm alone with a man, he insults me. Have I insulted you? Not yet. But there's a familiar light in your eye. I wish you'd put it out. You certainly cramp a fellow's style. This started off like a lovely evening. Let's not spoil it. Would it really spoil it if I said I love you? Don't be ridiculous. I suppose you're going to give me that love at first sight routine. Mm -mm. Love at third sight. Now who's talking like true confessions? Listen, boss, I've had a tough enough time with all those foreign entanglements. I'm in no mood now to fight off the home guard. Excuse me, I have to call the studio. Only take a minute. Go right ahead. Well, if that's the case, then the pens must be in invisible ink. Did you expect them to be in Braille? Hmm. How much time do you think you'll need? Well, the technique seems to have changed a bit since I went to college. I'd say a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks out of the question, old boy. No, this calls for drastic action. Tonight, immediately. What do you expect me to do? Knock her down, drag her out? Well, it's an idea. No, it's undignified. I've got it. You can carry her to my room. What do you mean, carry? The bartender, the pal of mine. Oh, you want me to slip her a Mickey Fenn? But you promised. No, I didn't promise to slip her a Mickey Finn. It's not a Mickey Finn. It's just something to get her drunk a little quickly, that's all. No, fine. Couldn't have it on my conscience. Then suppose I come over to the table and order the drinks myself. Then you can blame the whole thing on me. Well, okay. I advise you to change your mind, young lady. Believe me, I tell you this for your own good. Hi, Baron. What's cooking in the Wilhelmstrasse? Wiener Schnitzel. I'm beginning to get a little worried about that Blitzkrieg Lothario. Ah. Oh, come on, Michael. It's for a lady friend. Oh, a lady friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Don't let them out of your sight. Something is wrong. See what Michael wants. It's a nice uh, evening. And yes, wasn't it? Can I? I don't blame you a bit, Miss Royce. I'm awfully sorry for what happened yesterday. I, I, I'd do anything. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Oh, I just want to give myself a chance to prove that I'm sorry. I, I never insulted a lady in my life. All I want is a chance. I mean, I mean, I wasn't entirely responsible. Just what do you mean? Oh, well, it happened in the last war, you know. Lapses of memory, amnesia, messy business. I'd, I'd rather not talk about it. Oh, that's too bad. His mind goes blank. There was something on it when he called on me. Oh, oh well, sit down, Ronnie. Let's bury the hatchet. Don't tempt me. Thank you. That's really awfully sporting of you. And may I offer you both a drink? Waiter, if his mind goes blank again, I can take care of him. How will you know? Grand Marnier for the lady. Napoleon Brandis for the gentleman. Well, 
remember, this was his idea. What was his idea? Well, the drinks. All right. But where to put this on my bill, please? Very well, sir. Afraid his mind will go blank again? Oh, no, really, Miss Royce, you have the wrong impression of me. Yes, hoping this will straighten you out. I'm sure it will. Was that an earthquake? Well, I didn't feel anything. Don't be silly, old boy. We're in a part of the world where there aren't any earthquakes, you know? <laughs> Correction, please. What happened? Something hit me. Well, let's drink to that. Sister. Well, I feel fine. Say, what are you two drinking? Just a little Pinolian brandy. No, Napoleon, Napoleon brandy. That's what I said, little I. Lamoli. I mean linoleum. You mean Josephine's husband? Yes. Well, I've had enough of this. Where's my key? Hmm? Good night. Good night, Josephine. Good night. Ink reaction? Yes. There's a light. She's still up. Be going anyway. She's asleep. We'll wake her up and have a talk with her. Maybe we don't have to get rough. Miss Royce? Miss Royce? You've got company, Miss Royce. 
You've got to get up, Miss Royce. Oh, a peeping Tom. <coughs> you make all that noise. Come, something slip. Have I got a small mustache? Yes. Have I got blue eyes? Mm-hmm. That is me. until they do answer. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello, Sydney. Where are you? Huh? Oh, you are. Where is she? She's in your room. Huh? No, I don't remember a thing. I'll be in in a few minutes and you better think up some answers, Clarence. Sydney got a hold of the wrong key last night. Hey. What's that? More of that stuff we drank last night? No. That's ink reagent. This is all a bit of the Baron's handiwork. Yes, well, from now on, you do without me. Next time they slip me something, I'm liable to wake up. Well, Kane, you've got to follow through with No, it. this is as far as I go. I get off right here. There's the camera. All set. You're broadcasting again tonight, aren't you? Yeah, and it would make a great story. Pulled that line on me before. Only I didn't count on any rough stuff. Very well. I imagine I can handle it myself. But I must ask you to leave the room immediately. What are you going to do? Hold her down, paint her back, and take the picture all by yourself? job, and I hate to do it. I really have no alternative. I wish you'd go now. She'll be here any minute. But you're liable to kill her with that thing. Will you go into the bedroom and shut the door? Go, will you? All right, I'll help you. Only put that away. Good. I'll tackle her as she comes in the door. Come in. Oh, let me go. Let's be quiet, oh, my dear. Be quiet. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I thought it was someone I knew. I, uh, it's a sort of a game we play. This is a game, too. Oh, I say. I mean, what? Still at it, eh, Casanova? I will report this to the manager. Uh, no, please don't do that. It was all a... Ronnie got another attack. Seems to me the maid got the attack. 
Is, is that satisfactory? I suppose so. Next time you want to play this game, you... you... well, uh, you let me know, huh? Say, what happened last night? Well, it seems that you guzzled a whole thimble full of brandy. Now, if you don't mind, I'll ask a few questions. What are you leading up to now? Another one of his attacks? Time we drop this sham. Sham? What are you talking about? Oh, come on, be yourself, Mata Harry. Let me out of here. Oh, no, you don't. Think she's packing a gun somewhere? I don't think so. There's hardly room in that dress for her. Are you too crazy? Why would I be carrying a gun? Oh, please believe me, I haven't the faintest idea what this is about. All this play acting won't do you any good. You're not going to turn those plans over to the Nazis. Plans? You think I have plans for the Nazis? Oh, so that's what it is. You think I'm a spy? Well, that certainly explains a lot of things. You mean you're not a spy? You haven't any plans? Certainly not, but I don't expect you to believe me. I insist that you take me to the United States Embassy. You know, I've got a hunch she's telling the truth, Ronnie. I've told you all along, she's not the time. Little circumstances, we'd better go to the Embassy and make sure. Well, I'd be very happy to go. Well, this certainly puts a new light on things. Yes, on a lot of things. Especially that little speech of yours about love at third sight. Oh, that. Well, the girl just left the hotel with the British and Mr. Harper. Where did they go? We lost them in a crowd. Idiots! You made a mess of things last night and again today. Enough of this nonsense. Well, we'll give her one more chance. If she does not deliver the plans by tonight, I am afraid we will have to do away with her. Yes, that's right. Well, that seems to clear this, Miss Royce. Yes, we'll look into that. The FBI in New York satisfied. There seems to be somebody impersonating when she evidently hasn't arrived yet. I guess the first thing I'd better do is to get out of that hotel. Before you do, I'd like to send a man up to check those trunks for fingerprints. Of course. I'll go back to the hotel with you. Goodbye, Miss Rice. I'm sorry if we caused you any unpleasantness. Oh, it was all in the line of duty. Goodbye, Mr. Miles. Sorry I couldn't recover those plans for you. Thanks for trying, Mr. Harper. But remember, if you do get them, I get the first break on the story. That's the least we can do for you, my boy. After risking your neck. Oh, Miss Royce. You know, he really was afraid you were going to blow his brains out. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, yes. Well, let, let's get together some night. I promise you there won't be any more of those attacks. You know, I actually, I was not shell-shocked. Oh, really? Well, you uh, certainly could have fooled me. <laughs> <laughs> I did not call you a murderess. You did, too. You thought I was going to blow your brains out. If you had any, you'd have known I wasn't a spy. How would I have known? You think spies go around with signs on their backs? This girl that has the plans is a killer. She's already committed one murder just to get the plans. Really? Yes, really. Oh, I'm sorry. I had no idea it was as serious as all that. Did you get into this mix-up just to get an exclusive story? Well, what do you mean, just to get an exclusive story? Don't you realize what a scoop that would have been? Well, Richard Harding Davis never did anything so spectacular. Any newspaper man would have given his right arm to break a story like that and be right in the middle of it. Yes, I suppose so. Driver, do you know where I can find a chemist? Uh, a chemist? Yes, ma'am. There's one in the next block. Will you take us there, please? Very well. How are you in mechanical drawing? Oh, I don't know. Why? I have a little job for you. I warn you, you're doing this against my advice. I'm not asking your advice. How much more is there? I'm almost finished. Do you think they'll know what it is? Well, if this is something, I've invented it. What I've copied here is a combination harvesting machine and barbershop clipper. Very practical, too. Not only cuts the hair, but ties it in little bundles. <laughs> well, that ought to hold them for a while. Not for long. I suppose in the meantime, you think they're going to open up and tell you everything they know. Well, there's a chance I may learn the spy's real name. And if I do, and she's in the United States, the FBI can grab her. Now, is that important or isn't it? Well, yes. Look at the chance you're taking. Why should you get mixed up in all this? Any newspaper woman would give her right arm for a chance like this. Why, Richard Harding Davis... All right, anything. all right. If your own neck is sticking out. <laughs> Come here. I wish you wouldn't do it, Sidney. I can't have anything happen to you, not now. What do you mean, now? Well, all that talk last night about 
loving you. I, I thought it was Blonnie, too, but I realize now I... Save it. You wait here. If I'm not back in an hour, uh, you might look into it. But, Sydney, I tell you, it's not worth it. You thought it was. Hello? Oh, hello, Frankie. Yeah, I've been phoning all over for you. Didn't you know you had a broadcast tonight? I'll make it all right. I know, Ken, I know, but I've got to go over it with you for timing. Look, I haven't even written it yet. No, I can't get away. I'm working on something big. It may break any minute. No, I can't tell you. Look, I'll call you back later. Goodbye. Come right away, Miss Royce. Thank you. Everything is ready. I am glad you finally decided to consummate this little business. Not knowing exactly where you have the plants, I thought you might prefer a woman to photograph them. This is Miss Schlinger, Miss Royce. Hello. How do you do? Well, that's most considerate of you, Baron. But they're on my back, so it's very convenient. This little matter could have been settled the day you arrived if you had not made things so difficult. But don't you understand? I had to make that Englishman believe that he was on the wrong track. You should have waited and let me come to you. But uh, what happened last night? Well, I learned that Mr. Harper and Mr. Dean had a key to my room, so naturally I had to take another room. All right, spray it on. I hope it is not all worn off by now. That is perfect. Every figure, every line. It is too complicated for me. I will let our engineers figure it out. Yes, Baron, get your best engineer. You are a very clever young lady, Miss Royce. How would you like to do a job for us? Well, I'd be very happy to, Baron. And you don't need to call me Miss Royce any longer. Oh, yes. Miss Lennox. Rita Lennox, is it not? Yes, Rita Lennox. We have a way of finding things out. Now, hold still, please. That is fine. What about that new assignment, Baron? Ah, yes, I will tell you about that. Better wash the ink off first. Miss Schlinger, help her. I'd like to see the Baron at once. It's of the utmost importance. There's someone in there. Uh, he'll be through in just a minute. You may go, Miss Schlinger. Now, about this new assignment, I warn you that it is quite dangerous. Well, I'm here. Then listen carefully. Tomorrow, you will take the clipper to Trinidad. There, you will wait for Mr. Arthur Anderson, who will arrive on the SS Southern Queen. Yes. Mr. Anderson will give you some very important photographs. You will deliver them to the manager of the Lotus Hotel in Tokyo, Japan. The necessary passport and papers will be ready for you in an hour. I'll be back for them. We'll have your money ready then, too. Just a minute. Come in, please. Yes, sir. I'll tell him you're waiting. Prepare the necessary passport and papers for Miss Lennox. Yes, sir. This gentleman is waiting. Goodbye, Miss Lennox. The Nazi government will not forget what you have done for them. Thank you, Baron. I'm sure it won't. Oh, wait a minute. Your friend Paul Baker is here from New York. Show Mr. Baker in. Oh, yes. Paul. I'd better not wait to see him now. Tell him I'll look him up later. Oh, hello, Paul. Well, this is a surprise. Oh, you're looking simply marvelous. Did you have a wonderful trip? How did you come? By Clipper? Yes. Oh, how's Mrs. Baker? Oh, well, she's fine. And fine. all the little bakers? Well, Miss, there aren't any little bakers. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Well, uh, I've got to run along now. You know, lots of things to do. Bye, Paul. Who was that? Sidney Royce. Miss Rita Lennox, I mean. That was not Rita Lennox. I just arrived on the clipper with her. What? Stop her. Yes, Baron. Right, Baron. Yes, Stop that girl. Don't let her get out. Stop her.
Yes, miss. Is Miss Sidney Royce registered here? Oh, sweet 433. Uh, just a moment, please. I will see if she's in. Oh, never mind, thank you. I'm a friend of hers from New York. I want to surprise her. By the way, her trunks have arrived, haven't they? Yes, they're up in her room. I'm sorry, I'm looking for a Miss Royce. Well, uh, won't you come in? She isn't in right now, although I expect her back very shortly. She's out on an assignment. Assignment? Oh, yes, for the broadcasting company. Are you with the UBC? Uh, yes, I'm Kenneth Harper. And you? Oh, just a friend of Miss Royce. Uh, won't you sit down? By the way, how has she been getting along? Well, uh, she really hasn't had a chance to get started yet, although I expect her to be a great help. Uh, tell me, Miss, uh, what did you say your name was? I didn't say. I'm glad Sydney's getting along so well. Yes, so am I. Although her wooden leg is a handicap. Wooden leg? Oh, yes. Too bad, isn't it? There are a few things I have to do. I'll come back later. What's the hurry? Sit down, Miss Royce. You and I are going to have a little chat. Really? Something personal, I hope. No, well, perhaps. You're a very bright young man. Now, what were you going to say? Well, I... I was just going to say I admired your taste in clothes. Everything is just perfect. Except, of course, that run in your stocking. You're wasting your time, buddy. That's the oldest gag in the world. Oh. Well, you can't blame a guy for trying. You old sleepyhead, wake up. Tweet, tweet, tweet. You hear the little birdies? Remember me? Superman with a bulletproof union suit. Oh, your passport. My, you take a wonderful picture. Just a minute. Who is it? Me, Frankie. Got that story yet? No, but come on in. All right, come over to help you. Say, what kind of a setup is this? It'll take too long to explain, but boy, am I glad you popped in. Now listen, and don't ask any questions. I've got a girl trussed up in that bedroom. Miss Royce? Well, not exactly, but I want you to watch her and see if she doesn't get loose. And don't let anybody in. It's a matter of life and death. But, but who is she? I'll explain everything to you later, but keep an eye on her. She's a killer. You stupid idiot. You certainly messed things up. How you lasted in this game is beyond me. You get the plans? Uh -uh. Let's see. It's a lucky thing for you I came up here. Come on, we'd better get out of here. Yes? Mr. Kenneth Harper is here. Very well. Let him come in. We will see how much he knows. Yes. I can't imagine what happened to Rita Lennox. Well, what do you want? We are very busy today. You know what I want. Where's Sidney Royce? She is not here. Well, this kills the biggest story I ever had. I guess I've got to do it.
Is this? Yes. Where'd you get it? It walked into my parlor with a lady hanging on to it. The lady couldn't come. She's uh, tied up at the moment in very good hands. Look, gentlemen, I know what you're after. You know what I'm after. Why don't we exchange prisoners? Under certain conditions. You mean the plans on her back? If they haven't been removed. I'll let you talk to the lady personally. But first, I've got to see Miss Royce to satisfy myself that she's safe. We will take you to her. But remember, don't try any tricks. Or she may meet with an accident. That goes for you too, brother. Let's go. Royce up. We will be in the office. Very unusual tourist for this time of year. Come. Those boys getting in shape to swim the channel? That is not funny. My, my. Tourists all over the place. Naturally. Can't a few Germans take a vacation without you jumping at conclusions? Sure. What puzzles me is how they avoid the draft back home. Come in. You all right? Nobody has touched a hair of her head. Not yet, but there's been a lot of loose talk about it. Well, if you're satisfied, we'll arrange about the uh, exchange. Exchange of what? Sydney Royce's. We're swapping you for a later model. What? You mean you have the other Sidney Royce? In the flesh. Very fortunately for you. But those plans on her back, you're not going to let them have them, are you? You don't think they want her without the plans? But don't you see? They must be terribly important or they'd never make the exchange. Well, what do you expect me to do? I can't leave you here, can I? I won't go. Look, will you cut out the heroics, please? You're getting out of here while you're all together. I'm not. I have a few personal arguments which might convince her. Will you leave us alone for a moment? No, but go ahead. Don't mind us. Ken, do you realize what you're doing giving those plans to these people? I realize only one thing. Now that I've found you, I'm taking no chances on losing you. But those plans may endanger thousands of lives. I won't go. You'll go, honey, if I have to carry you. Don't worry. She will go. Well? All right. You... you were... Come on, we'll arrange the details on the way. Come. Are you blundering, idiot? I told you to keep her at the hotel. I found her in Miss Royce's room, Baron. They told me at your office I'd find you here. Why, you dirty... Take Miss Lennox inside and get her ready for the photographs. I'm afraid we shall have to forget that little exchange we discussed. I shall have to hold the both of you indefinitely. Watch them closely. Come, Baker. Looks like you must have found out something. Plenty. But what good will it do us now? I'll have a plane take the both of them to Berlin in the morning. Right. We're we'll already making the picture. This is certainly a load off my back. Hold still. What is the meaning of this? Is this a joke? What's the matter? What are you talking about? Here, I'll show you. I suppose you know nothing about that. It happened while you were asleep. I know when it happened. That man in there, Harper, he knocked me out cold. That's when he did it. I noticed a camera in the room when I came in. Miss 
Where are those plans? Where they belong. There's nothing you can do about it. You mean you've got them? By now, they've been wire folded to Washington. But how could you? They were on her back. Well, I used to be a pickpocket once. You will never be one again. Take them downstairs. What a foundation. Don't build them like this nowadays. At old time, I certainly knew how to live. Right here. get out of here. I'll write to my congressman. It's all right for you to joke, but I'm scared. I'm really scared. Try to get his hands around my neck. Are you all right, Ken? Yeah. Do you think there's any hope of Ronnie or Mr. Miles getting us out of this? Practically none. They don't even know we're in trouble. When I left the hotel, I just stopped in Miles' office long enough to give him the photographic plates of the plans. <laughs> I told him I'd explain it all to him later. I deserve everything that happens to me. I ought to be shot for getting you into a mess like this. But going to the Baron was my own idea. But I should have stopped you. You should have called the Baron and told him what you were up to. We'll never get out of this now. There isn't a chance. Stop talking that way, Ken. You think I'm brave and unafraid, huh? Well, I'm more scared than you are. I know what we're in for, but I won't let them. I'd rather be dead. Ken, what's the matter with you? <laughs> Goodbye, Sidney. And forgive me. Ken, what happened? From the governor. Oh, Your Honor, you're wonderful. You remind me to take it up from there. If we ever get out of this mess. Here, yeah, put this on. All right. Wait, the gun. Come on, let's go. I guess it's the only way out. 
We'd better get away before that other guard comes back. Presses, camera. Uh oh. Forged Portuguese passports. Hundreds of them. Looks like a good tourist season in Dakar. Oh, if I could only get out of here, I'd like to break this story. Which reminds me, I'm supposed to broadcast in about ten minutes. I don't think you'll make it. Say, there's a phone in the next office. Can't you call Mr. Miles for help? No, all calls go through a switchboard. They'll be on our necks in no time. Besides, if they saw help coming, they'd keep them outside until we were taken care of. But well, wait a minute. There's a public phone booth in the lobby. Isn't that nice? Now all you have to do is be the invisible man for five minutes. Besides, you just got through saying they'd take care of us if they saw help coming. I've got an idea. Wait a minute. Here. What are you going to do? Give me that coat. You won't need it. First thing I'm going to do is make a break for that phone booth. What do I do? Walk in front of it with a picket sign to keep them off? Look, if this thing works, you'll be safe wherever you hide. In about five minutes, they're going to be too busy to be looking for you. You're not going to leave me alone. I'm going but with you. You can't go through that lobby. I don't whether I can make it myself. I tell you that I am. That's the way it's going to be. It's our only chance. Give me those. You're going back in the closet. Most time now. I'm afraid we won't get very much news from Mr. Harper at Lisbon. Due to circumstances beyond his control. <laughs> <laughs> and now, through the worldwide facilities of the Union Broadcasting Company, we take you to London. Go ahead, London. Hello, UBC. This is London. There's a bright moon tonight and a cloudless sky. Just the sort of a night that a few months ago would have met an all-out blitz raid. Now, as then, I can hear the roar of bombing planes. But they are British planes taking off for German objectives. There are no reports of German raiders over Britain tonight. Whether this inactivity is due to the growing caution of the Luftwaffe because of recent heavy casualties elsewhere remains to be seen. Meanwhile, the rooftop watchers continue to peer alertly out across the tangled forest of London. He must be in water. some sort of trouble or you'd have heard from him. What did you say? He must be in some sort of trouble or you'd have heard from him. Hello? Yes, where are you? Where's Frankie? When are you going to... Oh, shut up and listen. 
Get a hold of Mr. Miles or Ronnie Dean. What? Well, let me talk to him. This is Edward Markham returning you to New York. And now we'll hear from our correspondent, Kenneth Hopper, for a report from Lisbon. Go ahead, Lisbon. UBC calling Kenneth Hopper in Lisbon. Come in, Lisbon. We're having a little trouble getting through to Lisbon. While we're trying to make contact, we take you to our correspondent in the nation's capital. Come in, Washington. Hello, UBC. This is George Taylor at Washington. I got lonesome. You got lonesome. This little trick could have ruined everything. I could kick your teeth on your throat if they, they weren't so beautiful. You were beautiful all over. Oh, not in this outfit, I'm not. I certainly fooled them, though. I got everything too big for me. Not too big to fool me. Yes? No, no, operator. Don't disconnect me. Here. What are you up to now? I'm going to be talking for some time. Shut up. Yes, Mr. Miles is on his way. Be out there in no time. It's all set. Tell him you'll be on the air in 30 seconds. The report reveals that Germany is understood to have gathered enough fuel for a three-year war even before she invaded Poland. We're interrupting our Washington correspondent to bring you Kenneth Harper, our correspondent at Lisbon. Go ahead, Lisbon. UBC calling Kenneth Harper at Lisbon. Hello, America. This is Kenneth Harper broadcasting from Lisbon. <laughs> Tonight, I've been How can that be, Harper? We have him locked up downstairs. <laughs> at the Hotel Linzer, which my assistant Sidney Royce and I left a few moments ago, we saw several hundred forged passports for German tourists to visit Dakar. How did they get away? Go downstairs and find out. You go with them and destroy the passports. The correspondent is very happy to say that with the help of Miss Sidney Royce, he took a prominent part in their recovery. At this very moment, Mr. Arthur Anderson is on his way to Trinidad aboard the SS Southern Queen. Among Mr. Anderson's effects, if the captain looks closely enough, and I'm sure he will, will be found some very important photographs. Don't you think we ought to get out of here before the police arrive? No. We will have the passports destroyed before they get here. It will only be Harper's word against ours. I think I will give the police a call myself. Incidentally, these plans were to be delivered to the manager of the Lotus Hotel in Tokyo. It must have taken months to bring these tourists here. The Hotel Linzer is packed with them. Come right in, Baron. Incidentally, guess who just dropped into this studio? None other than that famous authority on modern espionage, Baron von Kemp. Won't you say something to our radio audience, Baron? Ouch. Thank you, Baron. That sums it up very nicely. You are all under arrest. For my next broadcast, I hope to be able to give you the further details of this amazing Nazi intrigue. Until then, Nice I... work, Ken. These men will take care of the baron. You have no evidence. Oh, yes, we have. Ah, passport. Now, baron. Just a minute, young lady. I have a little unfinished business to take care of. Yes? Would it spoil your evening if I told you that you were the most beautiful, the most gorgeous, the most fascinating creature that ever made a man? Ladies and gentlemen, the opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily those of the Union Broadcasting Company. Mm -hmm.